Hello and welcome to another video. Today, in this tutorial, or in this video, we will be discussing how UI in Core works. I would like to say there's not big coding in here, but it's more going to be an overview of how the UI system itself actually works. We start off when you have a UI container. So a UI container is a UI container and it renders everything inside of it every time there's an update for it. And you have different content types you can select, but for now, let's leave it at dynamic. Now, you can add in a text box, for example, right? But it's, you don't want to add a track in your container, so first of all, you always want to have a panel childed to the UI container. You have these properties here. Now let's talk about how the right within the system work. So this does is that the width and height is how wide and how tall it is. So you can play around the height and the width. You can also make in here the parent width and parent height, which makes it obviously it says a parent. Now, say we have a UI panel childed to this one, when you make this panel this big, this panel will also be this big. You can add self size to inherited height and make it say negative 10 and negative 20 to make it smaller than the parent. Now, as you can see, if you want to have it in the middle, you might drag into middle, but then if you resize the screen, it's no longer in the middle. So how do you make it in the middle? Well, the way you can make it in the middle is by using the anchor and the docs. So let's reset the X and Y position to zero and zero. Let's set the anchor to middle center. What the anchor does is that is the point in the object or the UI image or whatever panel UI element where the position is took into account. So if it's in zero, zero, this point is the center of it, risk it's zero, zero, I guess, it's center. If you put it to middle right, then this can be here if you put it at zero, zero. So it's gonna be to right, or you can put it at middle left, zero. So let's put it at middle center for now. And obviously as you can see, if you move it down, the Y offset goes up and if you move it right the x opposite goes up so still if you have it in the middle and you scale it it's not gonna stay in the center anymore this is because you have the dock so the dock is going to be where on the parent element it's going to be located relative to so if we set this to middle center and now it's going to be 875 to the right and 5.50 down from the center of the parent object. So if you set this to zero, zero, now it's going to be back to here. Now say we have this over here now, we can have another panel inside of here and have it in the middle center of here. And let's make it a bit smaller. So 200, 200. This can be relative to the parent. So, and if you move the parent, this is going to move as well in here. And you can see you can change it now with anchor the dock. So, the thing with the anchor is where the anchor itself in the ship or whatever is dropped down, right? You can think of it as a ship. The anchor is where the anchor is dropped down and the dock is you know where the dock is where the harbor is and then the offset is how far away the anchor is from the dock now you can move the anchor to different parts of the ship from the top left top center top right etc you can even have it custom as well so you can move it around and then it's the same here as well but that's not necessary for now that's more complicated so let's leave it in the center for now. So 
that done, let's talk about how the images and text works. So an image is going to be a URL image. And you can shout it to something. It has all the same properties that React Panel does. So let's have it at middle center and middle center. We can select for multiple different images here. So we can have like a bear or an anvil, whatever, and all of these, right? Change the color and change for the whole object. Typically, it's kind of nice if you set something to black or white. Every other color doesn't really look as well, in my opinion. But you can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Change the V value to make it have different like contrasts between light and dark. And make it darker or lighter. You can also change the opacity as well. And speaking of opacity, you can change it on the parent panel. And of course, you can put it into the bold space as well. You can put the panel into bold space if you want to. But let's put it back into screen space. You can see it's going to go into bold space. I mean, put it back into screen space. So, anyways, with the UI image, we also have options to flip vertical and flip horizontal. Another thing is if you have a game ID, you can use the screenshot of the game as the cover image, as the image for the icon. So you just put in the game ID and it'll work. And for some things such as images and if I'm pretty sure only images have it, you can have shadow offsets. So you can have shadows on them, drop shadows, whatever you want to call it. And it can make a really cool looking effect. And there's also some images you can use for backgrounds. If you use a PG, you can have a background or a frame, frame for the background. So let's put another image and now let's say you have a background here now. And let's set the frame to uh, green. Now you can't see the frame. So what you do is move the background behind the frame itself. And we can scale the frame up to fit the background. There are also UI text boxes which allow you to insert text. So you can insert your text box, add into the panel, and put it to the center. And let's set the color to black. Let's put in maybe hundred for the width and the height. Let's put in um, some some um, text color. It doesn't matter what you put in. Just put text. You can select different fonts, which is pretty nice. The colors as well, same as the Images also same properties from before. With a few of these, you have horizontal justification. So that's going to be where the, like, if you have it to your center, it's going to try to deal with the text in the center to the left and right from there. To the left is going to be how the default is. It's going to try to put text from left to right. And right is going to try to fit text from right to left. So, so we can also scale to fit, so the um, text automatically scales to fit, so it gets bigger or smaller as the size changes. Although I will say it's somewhat unreliable, at least the time recording. And we have the drop shadow, which is basically the, well, exactly the same name. Thor is something else called it there. So we can have drop shadows on here as well if we want to. Let's get this. Make this uh, red or whatever, All right? And outlines, which is around the whole thing. So that's how you do that. And this whole bunch of other UI elements as well. We have buttons, which 
basically images with the ability of having text on them but in color hover to color press color so you have different colors along the image color i mean sorry one color but the image color itself by default is one in color you can change all the other color states progress bars are really cool what you can do with these is going to be changing the progress on them but you also have the ability to change the fill type so we have like both oops all right sorry here so that's if you have images you can have images on them as well so we can have like this If it work, which doesn't seem to be doing for some reason. Oh, this is just too big, I think. So we have it stretch. It's pretty cool. Um, now, some things you will notice with it doesn't work too well for some stuff. If you want to have a um, say. progress bar that goes up and down that's curved you can't really curve this easily you could maybe you can now with the new stuff they added have like a let's rotate 90 degrees bottom Yeah, left to right, right to left. And it's gonna do that now with a new update they added. But another cool thing you can do is you can use your right panels to clip the children of them. So if you have clip children enabled, what you can do is we can clip the children off in points we don't like them to be shown. You can get some pretty cool effects with it as well. And obviously, if you're creative, you can get like really, really cool effects with them, not just basic stuff like that I've shown. I'd say that's about it for the basics of how UI works in Core. And there's a lot more stuff to learn about it, but that's stuff you just learn by doing it yourself, such as just cool tricks. I mean, this is basically all the groundwork of what you need to know for it. There's a bunch of other cool tricks you can learn just by doing it, like ways you can do stuff by rotating things and all that kind of stuff so this video helped you understand how ui works in core thank you for watching please like and, sub please like and subscribe if you want and have a good day